This is the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, and co-sponsors Bo Cook from Lone Market, Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, the official clothing partner of the Paracave Podcast, and the official media partner of the Paracave podcast, the Parramatta Times. Broadcasting live from the Paracave. Hello and welcome to another bumper episode of the Paracave podcast. My name is Troy Warner and I'll be your host this week and every week. And this week it is episode 144. Now to this week's chat and it is again back to the fans and members series of those who love rugby league or are a high profile rugby league fan and this week's chat is with someone who has become a real good mate of mine through rugby league once again and uh, once again he is a massive Parramatta Eels fan but he is He has also created a rugby league themed game called Pub Rugby League, which is similar to beer pong without the beer, but it's played in pubs and it is the latest pub sport doing the rounds in Brisbane. So really interested in hearing about that one and all the action-packed fun playing it. And the man behind it and the massive Parramatta fan is Mr. Ryan Linton. Now, during the chat, we chat about his support of the Eels with the usual supporters' questions like favourite players, moments, how he became an Eels fan, season 2022 and 23, things like that. And we also discuss Pub Rugby League, which you can find on Instagram at PRL underscore Pub Rugby League. So check it out and give give it a follow after the podcast in and if you'd like to know more about it and also see how it's played as well so to that story shortly but in the meantime have you purchased your paracave podcast hat yet for the reasonable price of fifteen dollars It comes with a new exciting podcast logo and if you haven't already, all you need to do is either send me a message on the social media channels, the Paracave Podcast social media channels and we'll organise that one or you can email the podcast at www.theparacavepodcast at yahoo.com and you can order yours one now for only $15 plus postage and handling. So get your order in today. Get in quick. Be the first person to post on social media of you wearing your podcast hat. Also, there is uh, also available, thanks to clothing sponsor BTZD Clothing, there is a limited number of Paracave podcast polo shirts as well. There's three large shirts and three extra large shirts available at the moment. And uh, they are available for purchase as well for $30 each, plus postage and handling. Or you can get a combo deal. $40 $40 with a hat as well. So check out that one on the social media channels. They look great. Uh, great design. Love the stripes. Um, and yeah, been getting some really positive feedback about them. So uh, getting quick for those ones as well. As I said, three large, three extra large available at the moment. So getting quick for those. Get your combo deals or just get your hats uh, as well. And that wouldn't be all, all possible without the help of the sponsors of the show. Major sponsor, Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, and co-sponsors, Bo Cook from Lone Market, Brightside Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, and also, as I said, BTZD Clothing and Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty as well. Which you'll, And you'll hear more about those after the chat with Ryan. So thank you once again to all the sponsors with your support. It helps the podcast grow and reach more people, which is much, much appreciated. 
But enough of me talking. You want to hear Ryan Linton and his story of supporting the Eels and also about pub rugby league as well. I can't wait to bring you that one. It's so interesting. It looks great. I want to have a crack myself. So as Hindy says... Get a beer, coffee, whatever you want. Sit back, relax and enjoy and let's get straight into it. Hey, my name's Ryan uh, from Brisbane. I'm the owner-operator of a company called PRL, which is a small beer pong slash rugby league business, and you're listening to the Paracave Podcast. And as you heard from his intro, my guest today on the Paracave Podcast is, well, we're going back to the fans and members series of the Parramatta Eels, and it just co... Sorry fans and members series, but it just coincidentally happens to be a Parramatta supporter uh, and is also the owner and has founded something called Pub Rugby League as well, so something that no doubt we'll chat into as well. So welcome to the Paracave Podcast, Mr. Ryan Linton. Uh, thanks Thanks for having me, mate. Oh, not a problem. No, thanks for joining me. Um, Now... Going back to your younger days, was rugby league always the sport that you followed or, or played the most? Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I grew up in uh, grew up in Western Sydney, so I played a lot of my junior football at uh, East Hills Rugby League Club, so for the Bulldogs, and then moving out towards uh, Liverpool and Campbelltown Way where I played for the Liverpool City. How did you go as a uh, footy player? What was your position? And uh, yeah, pretty much did... my uh, my fullback because I'm I was very tall, so six foot two. Um, so yeah, fullback was the position. Um, did my did a little stint in, in the five eight, but it didn't work out for me. So yeah, fullback all the way. Yeah, no, no worries. Uh, now. Uh, you're a Parramatta Eels fan. I love the uh, fan. I love the jerseys in the background there. Uh, why? Did, when and why did you start supporting the Parramatta Eels? Uh, oh, funny story. I actually, uh, when I was when I was young, uh, my boys grew up when I was a wee tot supporting the Bulldogs, and then he said one day, he said, "You're old enough, mate, to support your own team, so you can support any team you like." So I just said, "Well." Who do the Bulldogs hate the most? And he said Para, and I said, "Well, that's who I'm going to support." <laughs> and I've supported him ever since. <laughs> ah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, certainly <laughs> a, a great rivalry they had there. Do you, oh. do you remember the first Eels game you watched live or, or on TV at all? Uh yeah, I remember the first one I watched live was oh, going back to the early. Actually, no, it was the late nineties, and it was. Uh, an early Christmas present we went to the, I believe it was the 99 preliminary final where oh, we got okay. beat by the Bulldogs. Um, oh, that was my first taste yep. of rugby league life and yep. I was cheering for 99% of the game but I ended up going home very sad. Yeah, nah, for sure, for sure. You can imagine. Yeah, nah, those finals games are hard to watch, especially uh, if you do lose, but uh, they are hard to watch in in any case. I uh, hate that time of year watching those games because you just, uh, yeah, you don't know the outcome and it sometimes goes the other way. Uh, to those early days, who were some of your favourite Eels players growing up and, and, and in those early days? Uh Probably one of my favourite players, actually. I had a couple of favourite players. Uh, Jimmy Dimmick. Oh, yes. Um, Kraken 5'8", and uh, Jared McCracken. I actually met them on an occasion, but at that time they were playing for the Bulldogs and even then they were starstruck. So when they came to uh, Para, they were pretty much instantly on the, on the top of my favourite player list. Yeah, no, definitely. I love Jimmy Dimmick and, uh, yeah, I love the way that Jared played as well with that aggression and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was great to see, and Jimmy with his little creativity and uh, great ball player and uh, cheeky little player as well. I remember the 97, I think, semi-final where he 
uh, got a penalty against him for for punching yep. a bloke, and he said, "Yeah, of it's course, I, I smashed him." So <laughs> I always remember that. Uh, as, as you'd expect him to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, what about any any of the say the eighties players? Do you think any of those should be immortals of rugby league? There's a, always a massive debate about immortals every every year, and personally, I think. At least one of the Parramatta players from the from the eighties golden years should be an immortal. What What are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, well, you got you you, you got a, quite a few picker players there. I mean, look, your Ray Prices and your Brett Kennys and your Cronins. I mean, you know, I think Cronin should definitely be an immortal. Um, but you, I mean, you can answer a case for pretty much any player in the eighties of Sterlo. You know, going back to all those players and the premierships that we won back in those years, it's yeah. I mean, they they all wouldn't look out of place in a in a hall of fame. So uh, to put my finger on one of them, I'd probably say Cronin. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good call, good call. Uh, what about uh, recently uh, recent players or even players in uh, the current team? Who who are your favourites? Um. Well, I'm, to be honest, look, look, looking at the the last game that we just played, I think I have a new favourite player. Yeah. Um, hands. He's oh. incredible. He's a gun. That guy needs to be played. He, honestly, he needs to be starting number nine. Um, but obviously, Dylan Brown. I mean, he's. I think he's a favourite of everyone's at Parramatta. <laughs> um, and obviously, King Gutho. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. You know. Which play is probably my personal favourite because I just love all of them, yeah. especially when they're firing together. Yeah, no, nah, certainly. Brendan Hands had a, a cracking debut last last week, scored a try, and um, looks looks very good in that, uh, especially in that fourteen jersey. I think at the moment, um, I think he'll probably come off the bench again this week. Um, yeah, but yeah, so. he could uh, easily do a case for starting the game as well. But I think being off, off the bench, he can add that spark and um, impact yeah. as well. So, Well, yeah. I mean, the whole dynamic of the game changed as soon as he came on. And, you know, to, to score a try on debut in front of the para faithful, yeah. it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Yeah, and especially against his former club as well. So, Exactly. Like um, yeah, definitely. Uh, what have been some of your standout Eels moments uh, from over the years, is there any any moments that stick out or, or games that stick out that you just really loved? Uh, I, well, I, I mean, I would say um, the the grand final win from last year, but we didn't win. So, um, I think the Cowboys game from from last year is one where they were down. Honestly, I thought that you know this was our season gone, and to have the resilience to to not give up and eventually come away with the win up there in Townsville. That was probably one of the standout games from last season. Um, and then you just you get a few dribs and drabs here and there with you know where you get your individual performances. I think one game last year against Manly where uh, Dylan Brown really shined and we yeah. put them to the sword in the second half. And games like that, especially against Manly, you know, you, you love to see it. So yeah, there's been a few games that, you know, really stand out and Hopefully, um, hopefully there's, there'll be a few more this year. I mean, I mean, Thursday night's game was an absolute belter. So, um, nomination for game of the year, right there. Yeah, for sure, grand final rematch. Let's hope we can mm. keep it keep it rolling, keep it going. Um, speaking nice. of 2022, how did you enjoy that last month of the competition? How did you enjoy that that ride? Uh, it, I, to be honest, I loved it. It was. Coming in after being you know, the last two seasons being knocked down in straight sets, you know your your, sta- your, your standards are right. Okay, we're probably going to get knocked out again in straight sets. But to to watch the quality of football and to watch the quality of football that Parrot played um, to get all the way to the grand final was was great. And I, I'm not going to lie, after the preliminary final, I was with a mate of mine who you've met up in Magic Round, and you know we were we were crying. I'm not going to lie, we were. We were very ecstatic, so it was good to see. You know, finally after what was it, thirteen years that we made a grand final, so it was really good. Yeah, for Until sure. I, I, yeah, I think everyone was crying after that game, after that prelim. Um, 
I, yeah. I watched it at the the Lees Club, and yeah, everyone around there was going crazy and and emotional and get a bit. It emotional. was a roller coaster. Yeah, get a bit emotional. We'll talk about that game now, actually, to be honest. Yeah. But um, where did you end up watching last year's grand final? Uh, we ended up just watching it at home. Um, I had myself and four or five Paris supporters here, and um, yeah, all the hype was was you know was good. It was like we had streamers up, we had yep. you know, barbecues, you know what you normally do on a grand final day. And come grand final, we were all you know, pretty much shattered. So um, yeah, it was just a, a, a night at home. On had a few beers. What, a, um, what were your thoughts of the of the grand final of the, of the actual game? Uh, I, to be honest, I think we'll bl- we'll blown away in the first half. Um, but that's what happens when you basically announce to a team that we're going to bash you through the middle, and then they know it's coming, and then you know they're ready for it. So um, to have, I think it was eighteen nil at half time, at, at, and against the Panthers outfit that are you know star studded yeah you're not going to come back from that so i mean the lead up to the game was good um the first 10 15 minutes were good and then unfortunately it just teetered out towards the end where it was pretty much our season over for 2022 yeah i I agree it probably the first 10 15 minutes it was a bit of a ding dong battle it was pretty tough pretty rough and then um yeah, it's sort of after that we sort of fell away, and unfortunately, the last probably what ten minutes we sort of came back, but it was all all over by then. Unfortunately, um, well, I think the whole game can be wrapped up in that one Dylan Edwards tap. I mean, that's just showed the drive that they wanted, they had the desire. Yep. And yeah, yeah. Carbon copy of Scott Sadler. Yeah, but still, I guess making a grand final it's a it's a massive achievement um, oh, in this absolutely. in this day and age. So. Uh, hopefully we can go one better this year. Now you're up in Brisbane, but have you been to Combank Stadium at all? I I haven't. I was actually you down haven't. there a couple of weekends ago when um, we played Melbourne, and I actually had to go to Foster for work. Okay. So I did, did actually plan on going to Combank Stadium, but I didn't make it unfortunately. And a lot of I've heard a lot of a lot of good stories about Combank, and being up in Brisbane, you know, you you kind of compare other grounds to Suncorp because. Obviously, Suncorp's a beast of a thing, so um, I will get to Combank one yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, no, well, let me know and we'll catch up for sure. Um, is is then Suncorp your favourite venue to watch uh, Parramatta games or or is there a, a venue that you've been to in the past that has been a favourite? Oh, well, I love the old Parramatta Stadium okay. before it got knocked yeah. down. Um, it just had that... that sub- suburban feel but it was kind of not it was kind of a like a biggish stadium but it still had that suburban feel with the you know the hills in the background the you know two ws sign in the yeah. corner and yeah so all right Parramatta stadium was probably one of the best stadiums up not that i don't love suncorp suncorp like i said it's a it's a beast of a place especially magic ground it's, yeah yeah it's crazy so yeah for yeah, sure Parramatta stadium for sure yeah, nah, it was sort of a, um, as you said, a bit of a suburb, suburban ground, but a city ground, all sort of in yeah. one, and probably one. state of art, state of the art before before its time. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about uh, favourite tries or, or try scorers? Is there anyone that stands out for you from over the years? <sighs> oh, you go on, if you go back to obviously when Hayne that had that magical run in two thousand and nine. Um, he was a gun, but then coming forward to beat Semi Raj Rajra. Oh yes, uh, yeah. I still remember one of his one of his tries. I believe it was against South Sydney, where he ran the length of his field on his own. You thought, "Wow, what a player!" Yeah. And you know, yeah. we we thought we're never going to get better than Raj Rajra. And then along came Sevo, and you know, look at look at what he can do. It's just crazy. But there's been a few, yeah. Yeah, no, that. Uh... Rad Rada try against us, unbelievable. It was like, I think Sturlo said in the commentary, he said, don't pass it, don't pass it, just keep don't going, keep going. And he was sort of I think he in and out. And, in and out, zigzag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he, was a, he was a weapon, that guy, but 
Yeah, well, one of my Hopefully favorite... one day he comes back. Well, yeah, you never know. But well, one of my favourite memories of Rad Rider was at Suncorp Stadium against the Broncos, um, where he scored four tries that night. Um, I remember that. A couple of length of was the field. That the game? Yeah, yeah, a couple of length of the field tries in that one as well. So um, Was that the game where we scored the fastest try in NRL history? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Kurosomi of R he um yep. eleven seconds I think it was. Off uh, Adam Blair offload. Off the, <laughs> well, yep, yeah, yeah, Adam Blair <laughs> offload or or uh, just lost the ball. Big hit from the power yep. forwards maybe, who knows? But yep. we'll go with a big hit. Yeah, better. we'll go with a big hit and uh <laughs> Yeah, Kurosami's got the try, but yeah, nah, that was the game. Yep. Has there been a favourite coach of yours that's coached Parramatta from over the years? Uh, well, it's definitely not Ricky Stewart, that's for sure. Um, our current coach, I can't go wrong with Brad Arthur, he's, yep. what he's done with the team, he's been taking the game, taking the team when we were down and out wooden spooners to, I believe, 2000 and. Was it 2018? We were wooden spooners, and then we made the fall. We've made the finals every year after that. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you've got to commend him for for what he's done. And honestly, he he needs to be a premiership winning coach. He's just what he does is just incredible. He drinks a lot of water though. <laughs> yeah, we always see that um, yeah. more so in Darwin and uh, and the like. But uh, it, yeah, that. Those those Darwin games always intrigue me. Why we take two teams from humid client uh, climates up to a place where it's more humid climate? Climate. Yeah, I, I'm you, not you too sure whether the it. NRL has a has a say in that to try and get those yeah. teams that are up that way to to be there for Stay for up. crowds and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah um, you can understand. It was good when we took Penrith and Canberra. There we got the got the wins against those, so oh, that's it. we'll have to see what happens. This I think it's, it's Broncos, uh, yeah, Broncos, and I think it could be Anzac Day round or Anzac Anzac Day round. I think it's the Friday I, night I, before that. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Uh, no, it'll be good, but um, yeah. yeah, you're definitely right about the water. There's always a competition has to guess how many bottles of water is going to be in front of Brad up in up in Darwin. Certainly very funny indeed. Uh, um, do you have a favourite piece of Eels memorabilia or, or something unique that you really uh, love? Yeah, I do. I have a 2001 sign jersey. Yeah. Um, that's my, my prized pride, possession. Pride um, and joy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have wanted me to sell it, but... Uh, Hanging on to that, I'll probably hang on to that to the day I die. I'll probably get buried with it, actually. So. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, that's my, uh, my most prized possession. Yeah, no, that, that was uh, certainly a great year. Speaking of that year, obviously you made the grand final. Have you been to any Eels grand finals? I haven't had a chance to get to any Eels grand finals. I, I tried to in 2001. I couldn't get a ticket. Yeah. Um, and then by 2009... I moved up to okay. up to Queensland already, so it's kind of hard you now getting the time off and whatnot yeah. to fly down to Sydney. So you're probably you're probably hoping last year, we, uh, sorry, 2020, uh, 20, yeah. 21, 21, was it twenty one? Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Uh, yeah, competition was up in Queensland. Uh, you're probably yep. hoping we'd make the grand final that year. That yeah, would have been nice. It wasn't to happen. <laughs> no, that's it. Now, the Eels haven't had the greatest of starts to season 2023. Um, we've been close, but, I mean, every every fan wants their team to win the competition um, every year. What would you be happy with as a as a pass mark uh, with the Eels in 23? Uh, well, being a slow start, I mean, you, you look at the run that they've got ahead. I mean, the first four rounds, they've, they've basically played – Top four or eight teams in in last year's besides Manly in the first four weeks, and they've all come off by. So, being a slow start, you know, you, you potentially you could make top four, and then you know, who knows what can happen with a bit of luck and a fair wind. I mean, anyone, everyone wants to see Parra win. I mean, I'd love to see Parramatta win. I haven't seen them win since 1986. So, um, I think pass mark, you know, you. Top four preliminary, anything from there is probably just a bonus. I mean, yeah. we lose, we did lose a lot of players from last year that we're still trying to 
you know, get our squad back to where it was last year. So it's, um, yeah, top four. But yeah. See how it goes, I suppose. Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, once you make the finals, anything can happen from there. Um, like exactly. 2009, making it from eighth. and uh, But, yep. yeah, you want to finish as high as you can to get that second bite at the cherry. Uh, yep, exactly. time, time for a little bit of fun. If if there was no salary cap and you got an open checkbook, um, is there a player from the past that you would have loved to have signed to come to Parramatta? Uh, Billy Slater. Okay, yeah. Billy Slater. Just the way he, his ball running skills, his passing skills, it's, he was basically, you know, the, the ultimate fullback and when he burst onto the scene, because I remember they, Jared Hayne and Billy Slater had that big rivalry in 2009 and afterwards, after that, and you look at where Billy Slater took his game from there on and where Jared probably fell off a bit. Um, I think Billy Slater developed developed his game and you know so yeah absolutely uh billy slater and probably the other one i'd probably have cameron smith okay i don't yeah i don't really like i'm not a big melbourne fan but yeah. those two the way that cameron could control a game speed it up slow it down and you know those connections with with billy slater and, and cam i mean who wouldn't love to see that no those two in a para jersey yeah um yeah no definitely two legends of the game and uh, one's probably going to be an immortal uh, before the other, and that's probably Cameron Smith. But uh, Billy yeah. may get that as well later on down the track. Um, oh, it's almost a given, really. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, we've just seen uh, in the in the media that uh, just recently, yesterday, that Parramatta are after. A, a gun player, not necessarily a fullback, but uh, just a gun player. Again, if you got an open checkbook today, uh, which player today do you think uh, or you would love to have at Parramatta? Who do you think is that game breaker that probably Parramatta oh. need and that you could sign? Oh, game breakers. No utilities. I really like the look of... Um uh, the 14th for Penrith. I can't remember his name. Um, he come on and played dummy half. Um, his, I mean, he would be as an impact player. Yeah, he would be a an, an asset. Um, of course, if you go to an open checkbook, you know you you could throw money at you know Latrell Turbo. It, it could be anybody, but if you Purely going off just a utility player, I'd probably say the fourteen for, for Penrith, okay. because you know you, you look at you look what he does when Mitch Kenny comes off and he comes on, it he changes the, the dynamic of the game in in an instant. So um, I can't remember his name. I was, I've just had a memory. Blank. Yeah, no, same, same. Um, he's only new onto the scene, I think, too. So, um, oh, Luke. Oh yes, Sun, Sunny yeah. Luke. Sunny Luke. Sunny Luke. Yeah, yeah. Sunny Luke. There we go. I knew it would come to me. Yeah, yeah, we got it together. We got it together. <laughs> oh well, there definitely some. Uh, oh dear, definitely some good signings that we'd love to have at Parramatta. But um, mm. yeah, if we had an open checkbook. But uh, yeah, good probably on. unfortunately uh, they won't come. But uh, you never know. One day, one day. Let's get on to the pub rugby league. Um, that you're the owner and founder of. Uh, yep. When did it all start, and what is it all about? Uh, it's a it's a bit of a long story. It's it's something that um, uh, I came up with back in in 2016 uh, when I was in my early 30s and you know footloose and fancy free, and <laughs> um, I ended up buying a, a beer pong table from from China, and when it arrived, it was it was broken. Okay, and yeah, so I. You know, as you, as you do, I, I'm one of those sort of people where I see a problem and I can fix it. So I went and fixed it and got it home and it looked a bit weird. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll paint it. So I just yeah, it happened to be the only paint that I had in the house. And I'm glad it was the only paint I had in the house was green paint. Yeah. So I painted it green and I ended up making a footy field out of it. And then I've just developed rules and gameplay rules and all that sort of stuff. And now it's... 
<laughs> it's nuts now. It's, yeah. It's it's crazy now. So, so how, how does it um, – beer pong and rugby league, how does it tie in together? So technically the only similarities between beer pong and PRL is the fact that you have a ball, a cup and a table. Yeah. So everything else is different. We don't do the old triangle where the, you, you, know, you, you take a shot at the ball and you know, the cup comes off. With PRL, you, you know, you're taking a shot at the ball and the balls are worth points. Okay. So once you, you know, you, you've, you've sunk in a cup, that ball comes off the table, it's four points. And then we've got a tee where you put your ball on, you actually flick the version. So okay. yeah, you, you, we, we base it off points and yeah. not how many, how many cups you get. So, um, Looking at, I mean, you can find all the information on on our website and whatnot, all the gameplay rules. But it's 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 grown from what it was to to what it is now. So it's it's actually pretty big now. It's taken off, and it's a little bit scary. So. Okay, yeah. Oh well, mate, it's a it's a credit to you. But you had you've had some competitions that I've seen on the Instagram page, and yep. um, is it when you have the competitions? Is it like a, a round robin semis and a grand final like rugby league? So what we use is we use, um, remember the old Rugby League Nines draw, how they had four pools? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, so we use the four pools and the top two from each pool go into a final series and then we'll do the, the NRL final series okay. uh, format because we'll yep. use the four and against in your in your top in your pool matches and then we'll go, you know, the top one and two, three, four, get two bites of the cherry. <laughs> And then we go from there all the way through to the, the grand final. So, yeah, it's we try and base it, base it as much off rugby league as possible. And it's the way that we set up our comps. It's you know if people are paying ten dollars entry, you know you want them to have more than one game. So okay, yeah, you want it to be worth their while. So, yeah. yeah. Now That's you're based in Queensland. Is there any yeah. any thought of expanding into New South Wales and having like a state of origin sort of? Series, oh, yeah. league series. Oh, it's on the car. We're uh, we're we're in talks with a few people to to um get it franchised. Okay. And okay. and down down into Sydney, um, of course, me coming from Sydney, I do have a lot of contacts down yep. there. So it's only a it's only a matter of time before you see PRL popping up in Sydney pubs, and you know, one day it could be you know like, uh, Queensland versus New South Wales, and I hope New South Wales wins. I'm still a blue supporter, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's on the cards. It's it, it's expanding very quickly, so yeah. Ah, oh, no, that, that's great to hear. So, uh, up in Brisbane, where can publicans get in touch with you if they're thinking of having a competition? Uh, they can get in touch with us on our website, and they will see all the links to our mine and my business partners' emails. Uh, you can get us on Facebook at PRL AUS and Instagram on PRL underscore Pub Rugby League. So. Any of those socials or anything like that, they can reach us if they want to host an event. And yeah, we're all up for it. Uh, nah, it sounds great. Um, I'm assuming maybe Magic Round might be busy for you guys having competitions, or yeah, see, you want to be at the Round, games. Yeah, see, we with my business partner and I have basically said we're not doing any comps Magic Round because okay. Magic Round yeah. is our time. Yeah, yeah. Where as, as you know, I. I I go to Magic Round every year, and so does he. So um, we'll probably see you up there. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be up there in Magic Round for sure. Can't wait. I'll have to. Uh, we'll have to have a couple of beers and have a game of PRL, mate. Yeah, show yeah, you the ropes. definitely, definitely. Love to give it a crack for sure. Uh, I reckon you'd love it. Yeah, no, it, um, yeah, no, it looks like fun. So love to give it a crack. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wrap things up with the um, the segment that I call the set of six, just basically yep. some fun personality sort of questions. Um, outside of rugby league, what what what's your favourite sport outside of rugby league? Uh, unfortunately, cricket. <laughs> A lot of people might think, oh, cricket's no, boring, no, but... It's all right. Yeah. 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 Cool. No, nah, that, nah, that's all right. Uh, cricket in the summer and footy in the winter. I should have actually answered PRL. <laughs> well, yeah, you could have. You could have. Because that would be an all-year re- all round. Uh, it's an all-year all sport. Summer, yeah. winter. Uh, Anytime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what's your specialty dish in the kitchen or on the barbecue? Uh, anything smoked meat. So your, your roast porks and your roast lambs and 
anything done in the smoker, your briskets and all that sort of stuff, then, yeah, that's that's my go-to every yeah. Sunday. Nice, Every nice. Sunday. Every, every rest, Sunday. Every nice. Sunday out in the smoker, mate. Yeah, Footy no. on the TV. Nah, that sounds good. My Sunday ritual is uh, bacon and eggs in the morning, so... Um, Can't go wrong with that. Everyone's got to have a Sunday ritual, I think. Yep, exactly. Right. Um, who was the most famous person, dead or alive, that you uh, would love to either meet or have met and have a beer and a chat with? Well, oh, that's a tough one. Dead or alive? Hmm. Uh, might be a bit left field, but Amy Winehouse. I reckon okay. she'd have some good stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was a bit of a loose unit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, that's fair enough, yeah. Yeah. Definitely interesting there. Um, you're stuck on a deserted island. Which three Eels players do you think you wouldn't want to be stuck with? Uh, Junior Paulo. He'd probably eat everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, probably King Gutho because I'd want to be the king of the <laughs> island. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, and probably Jared Hain. Yeah, because he'd be flying around everywhere in his Hain train or his Hain plane. Hain plane, yeah. He, well, he'd fly off the island anyway. He'd fly he? off the island. He's on his plane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's what's your favourite sporting documentary or or uh, or movie? And it can be a can be a comedy movie. Uh, documentary, I'd have to say the Michael Jordan documentary. Um, that was really good to watch and just the way that he became the, the player that he was through all the adversities and all that sort of stuff with his father passing and whatnot. Um, and comedies, obviously, you can't go past Happy Gilmore. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Classic. The last dance, that always gets a mention when I ask that yep, question. And, um... Yeah, Happy Gilmore. I, I feel a bit old uh, these days. I think the other day it was like twenty five years or, or five years. something yeah. like that since it was makes, since it came out. So yeah, it makes no. you feel old, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, classic movie. Uh, yeah. Who was your favourite band or solo artist to listen to? Uh, Linkin Park. Okay, yeah, and even still to the day now with Chester going up, I listen to Linkin Park pretty much every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Linger Park was something that I, I grew up on in Campbelltown, back in the west side. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Linger Park um, and probably like, yeah, old school, probably Metallica and stuff like that. So a bit of a rock head at, at heart. So, yeah, nice. yeah, those are my two bands. What, so, what, yeah. What's your favourite Linkin Park song or is there too many? <laughs> oh, there's so many. I, I, with the... the the release of Meteora 20 is their 20th anniversary of releasing the Meteora soundtrack. They're, there's 14 new songs on there, so um, just all these emotions going around, going, "Oh, this song's now my new favourite." But I can't, I, I can't put it. If I'd have to put up uh, a favourite song on anyone, it'd probably be uh, a little unknown one called "My December." Okay, yeah, probably my uh, my go-to Linkin Park song. Ah, nice. Well, Ryan Linton, thank you very much for joining me today on the Paracave podcast. And uh, listeners in Queensland, if you want to host a pub rugby league competition, get in touch with Ryan and organise one. Um, and as you said before, no doubt we'll catch up at Magic Round. And uh, no looking forward to giving pub rugby league a, a crack and uh, seeing how good it is and how fun it is. So uh, look forward to that. So thank you very much for coming on the Paracave podcast today. Awesome, mate. Thanks for having me. Hello, how you going, hey, mate? Are you a Paracay podcast listener? I am, bro. Okay. It's a great podcast. Mm-hmm. Everyone tune in. Wait, are you okay. Okay. Well, welcome back, and thanks for listening to Ryan Linton and his rugby league stories about supporting the Parramatta Eels and also his pub rugby league game as well. As I said before, a game I'm hoping to give a crack maybe in a few weeks' time when I'm up there in Brisbane for Magic Round. It looks like... It looks and sounds like a lot of fun as well. But as I said, follow Pub Rugby League on Instagram. At that uh, Instagram site is PRL underscore Pub Rugby League. And you'll be able to see for yourself what it's like, what's involved, and 
how fun it actually looks like playing as well. So more information about Pub Rugby League on the Instagram page. So check that one out and give it a follow. Thanks again, Ryan, for your time and your chat on the show. It was really interesting and no doubt we will catch up in a few weeks' time at Magic Round uh, when the Eels play the Titans in the final game of Magic Round uh, and we'll have some more great times together. So a quick uh, a shout out to the sponsors of the podcast. The major sponsor, Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club. Don't forget, it's available in the club shop and it's perfect for that Eels fan or beer lover. So get yourself some today and keep an eye on the social media channels as well for what's happening at Parramatta Leagues Club each and every week. And co-sponsors, Bo Cook from Loan Market. Once again, his contact number is 0401 213 236. Get in contact with him for a free chat and see how he and his team can help you get on top of your home loan and find you that best deal. Also, if you want to be driving around in the shiniest and cleanest car in town, contact Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics. He's also on Instagram and Facebook as well. But if you want to contact him, you can phone 0449 544 086 and let him know that you heard it here on the Paracave podcast. BTZD Teamwear as well, head to www.btzd.com.au, check out their range of team sportswear and contact them and see what they can do for you. As I said in the intro as well, don't forget you can order your Paracave podcast polo shirts for $30 each. They are in three large, three extra large, that's all that's left at the moment. Uh, we'll be possibly maybe looking to get some extra sizes later on, but at the moment, that's all that's left at the moment, so check those ones out, Uh, and if you like those, just message me on social media, and we will see what we can do to get one to you as well, so thank you BTZD Teamwear for those. And Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, get in contact with Shannon on 04. 2158844 2158844 today for service from a five star real estate agent who is based in the Glenmore Park and the is based in Glenmore Park but also services the Penrith LGA area as well. Please support these businesses that support the podcast that help bring you quality entertainment each week and share the love on socials as well. Thank you once again to you, the listeners, for listening to the podcast, Uh, not only the Monday edition, but also the Wednesday and Thursday editions, the shorter podcasts that come out during the week. I really appreciate your support. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the podcast. So as soon as it drops, you'll be able to listen to it. I really appreciate your support. Tell your family, tell your friends. Um, all about it and tell them to jump on board and subscribe and have a listen to a a para fan talking about rugby league and also uh, interview some para fans and also fans of rugby league as well and also some former players and those involved in rugby league as well so uh, thank you really appreciate the support and thank you once again to the official media partner of the podcast, The Parramatta Times. For all your local Parramatta news, simply head to www.parramattatimes.com.au. Now, before I go, I just want to ask you, did you enjoy the extra content during the week as well on the podcast? What was your favourite bit on the extra little bits um, during the week? There's a few extra podcasts there. Uh, with my Talking Para podcast that I'm involved in as well and the Pulse FM. So a Legends or Fans interview on the Monday, a chat with the Duckman on his weekend sports rap show, which is on Pulse FM, 89.9 FM. 
You can catch that live on a Friday night after 7pm or on a Sunday night live after 7pm as well. Or you can catch my chat with him on the Wednesday. I'll drop that as a podcast on the Wednesday uh, and possibly also the Saturday as well for... The Wednesday will be the review of the round, the previous round, and the Saturday will be a preview of the uh, current round, being a Saturday. And also, on the Thursday, there'll be the Talking Para podcast as well, so my excerpts from that one as well, but you can also follow them on Apple and Spotify as well, and they're also on Instagram and Facebook as well, so you can catch all the lads you can catch the full Talking Para podcast uh, on that one as well, but you can catch my excerpts on a Thursday. Let me know what your thoughts were uh, via a review on the podcast platform that you listen on, and please leave me a five-star rating and review. It would be most appreciated. Have a great week as best you can. and Enjoy your footy. But make sure you follow the podcast on the social media channels for some interesting content and also to see who is coming up on the podcast, both on Instagram and Facebook as well. Some great and interesting guests coming your way. If you had seen on the social media channels, you would have seen over the next coming weeks, we have have Jake Duke from Fox League, commentator there, and also the host of Face to Face the face-to-face show on a Monday night, and we also have former Eels player amongst other clubs as well, Brad Takarangi. So really looking forward to bringing you those chats as well. But to sign off the show, and as I always say, the Paracave podcast, by the fan, for the fans. Go, Para!